Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're gonna check out a game that has some interesting mechanics and an interesting theme. Uh, we're gonna check out Expedition Northwest Passage uh, from Madagot Games and Eve Turigny, or Turigny, um, I don't know how to say it, Eve. Uh, but the game kind of focuses around an expedition, obviously. Uh, and you're going to be trying to take your boat and your sled out to the Northwest Passage, racing out to be one of the first there, or exploring the terrain on the way, uh, and kind of trying to get back before the end of the game, keeping your different guys alive. And you may not keep all of them alive. Uh, now, when you move about, the seasons are going to change. Some of the uh, water that you're sailing on is going to freeze over and you'll bring out your sled and you'll kind of continue with the expedition. But trying to get everything back is going to be an interesting challenge. Uh, so real quick, why don't we take a look at what comes inside of this box. We'll see how the game plays. And we'll come back here at the end and get my opinions on Expedition Northwest Passage. So here you can see the components for Expedition Northwest Passage. Each player has a boat that's going to be leaving from Greenland, trying to travel across this area that is kind of unknown yet, that the players will be building, to get to the Northwest Passage in order to score 13, 7, or 3 points, depending on who gets there first, if anybody even gets there. You will then try and travel back to Greenland, and whoever gets back to Greenland will get 7 or 3 points, uh, whether or not they made it to the Northwest Passage. So you can turn around halfway and come back and at least get 7 or 3 points. In order to do this, they're going to be using their crew that are on their ships. And this crew will be moving from the active area of their ship to the resting area of their ship and doing so will allow them to take actions of which there are one, two, three, four, five, six different actions, technically seven, I guess, seven different actions that you can take. Now, on a player's turn, they're going to be taking these actions, but it's going to be somewhat dictated by the position of this sun marker. Uh, first thing to note, importantly, is that everything above this blue line here, or everything above the center, is frozen. That means the water is land, the land is land, everything above this blue line is land. And this will be moving around the board, where at certain points, basically everything on the board is going to be frozen, except for this bottom line of area if it's filled in. Um, that will happen for two turns where this entire area is frozen and it's all land, which means you'll need to get your sled out and instead of using your ship, move your sled to maneuver across this area. But as we progress in the game, things will thaw and this entire second area of the board down here will be thawed. Anything below that line in the yellow area is a thawed piece of land. So at the start we have a lot of thaw and everything will be thawed. Now this doesn't mean that the land mass is water as well. The land mass is always land mass on this map. The water will be water if it's a thawed area, but if it's frozen, everything will be solid land. Uh, just kind of a thing to distinguish at the start. Now, as I said, the idea is to be traveling and navigating this area, exploring and hopefully reaching the Northwest Passage, but there are ways to earn points along the way as well. Players will be using their guys here, and in turn order, they're going to go ahead and they're going to try and figure out what the best actions are to take. Each of these actions will cost them a number of guys that they'll have to move from active to inactive. Uh, so, for example, you can move one guy from active to inactive to draw a tile from this area. Now, everyone will start with one of these tiles. Uh, and these tiles are going to either be large tiles that are two in size. You can see this one has a guy on it. Uh, or they're going to be smaller tiles that are one in size. And you can choose to take either one when you take a tile. The larger ones will have some of these features on them, and these will put tokens on here that you can collect if you go buy them and you happen to be on the same tile as that thing. You can spend some of your actions to pick them up, and they may be worth victory points immediately, as well as victory points at the end of the game. If you want, you can take one action and then pass it to the next player, and you will just spend the requisite number of guys to take that action. Instead, you can take a second or third action, but doing so will cost you one extra guy for every action you want to take. So for example, if I now wanted to play a tile after taking one, let's say I took this one and replaced it with a tile from this awesome canvas bag, uh, I would then be able to place my tile. Placing a tile costs you one worker. So I would usually have to move one from active to inactive to take an action. But since this is my second action in a row, it's going to cost me an extra guy. And I would move him down and then be able to place my tile. When placing a tile, I must match all features of the currently existing tile uh, that's out there. So for example, I would place a tile out uh, and I have to match all existing features. So this wouldn't actually be a legal placement because this side doesn't match perfectly to that side. But this legal placement would happen because the land matches the land, the water matches the water, and I don't have anything on either other side to match. You must also always place a tile next to at least a pre-printed tile or another tile that's already out on the board. If placing a tile out onto the board causes you to complete an island, meaning that the island is completely finished, uh, or that 
one area is completely surrounded by tiles, you'll actually fill in the remaining tile from the small ones in order to complete the island. You're actually going to get victory points for that equal to, uh, well, based on the size of the island. If it's there two or three tiles, you'll get one point. If it's four tiles, two, and onward and upward. You'll also get a cartography token, which can potentially get you points at the end of the game if you have the most of them. So you can continue to take actions, but each extra action that you take beyond the first it will cost you one extra guy. This isn't cumulative, it's not two for the third action and three for the fourth, just one extra for each action you want to take. Now, instead of doing that, you can pass it to the next player, who could then take their action and around the table until it came back to you, and then you wouldn't have to spend the extra guy to take an action. It's just if you want to take them consecutively. The other actions are going to be to clear this tile supply, replenish it with tiles from the bag, and then draw a tile, and that will cost you two workers from your active to your inactive area. The next type of action would be moving your boat, or your sled, but we haven't covered sleds yet, and you would be able to move from wherever you're at to an adjacent tile as long as you can move through the type of terrain that you're on. So right now, since this is all water, my boat can only move from a water area to a water area on an adjacent tile. You can't move diagonally, but I could move from this starting tile to here, or the starting tile, starting tile to this tile right here, or even the one above me. Uh, actually. I that's incorrect, I can't move up because that area is currently frozen, so I can either move down or over into the water area. The next type of action you can do by placing one worker down is that you may transfer people between your boat and your sled. Each player will have a sled, it looks like this, that they can place out onto the terrain. When you do this, it costs you one worker from active to inactive, and then you may move any number of workers between your boat and your sled, which is adjacent. The sled will get deployed onto a piece of land that's on the same tile as your boat, so either here or up above me here, and then that sled can maneuver around the terrain in the same way. Now this will be important because at some point this landmass will freeze over and you'll need to have a sled out there in order to move your guys further towards the Northwest Passage because your boat will be stuck in a frozen mass of ice and be unable to move. So it will be important as the game progresses to get your sled out and move guys around, having guys on that sled to take action because guys on your boat aren't going to be able to move your sled. So you'll need to move them onto the sled in order to take movement actions later in the game and explore various things out on the board. The final two actions are going to be picking up tokens that will become available on the board as the game progresses. When you put out a new tile that has a feature on it, for example the Inuit on this tile, when this gets placed out, or the Inuit that I placed out earlier, a token will go onto that tile. When you place that token, it's available for someone to pick up if they get either their boat or their sled onto the same tile as that feature. It costs three guys moving from active to inactive, either on your boat or on your sled, in order to pick up uh, these ones that are suns or the ones that kind of have a canoe type area. They have specific names, but I don't remember them. But it costs you three guys moving from active to inactive to pick those up. When you do so, you're going to earn points based on which area you pick them up in. If you pick them up in the one times area, they'll be worth one point, two times two points, and three times three points. However, at the end of the game, if you have the most of these, they're going to be worth 11, five, or two for the compass rose slash sun style one, uh, and 13, seven, and four, for the kind of canoe camp style one that you have. So whoever has the most will get a bunch of points for picking those up. Correspondingly, the Inuits and the Cairns are going to give you two, four, or six points for picking them up in the one, two, or three areas. Uh, but they do not give end game points, except for if you collect a set of all of the different tokens. Cartography, the two here, the two here, now uh, will give you five different tokens, which is worth six points. So through using your guys and activating them, you're going to be moving them from active to inactive, either on your ship or your sled, to build more land, move your ship across the, the sea and land areas if it's the, if it's the sled, uh, pick up these different tokens, finish some islands in order to hopefully get some cartography tokens, which will give you points for finishing the island and for the cartography token at the end of the game, and hopefully reach the Northwest Passage in order to pick up these tokens, uh, being there first before anybody else. However, if you decide not to go all the way, you can turn back and go back to Greenland. Now, once you've used your guys, you decide you don't want to use them anymore, you can pass and you'll move your guy from the turn order area down into the lower area uh, to go first in the next turn. Once you've passed, you can no longer do anything. Once everyone passes, you're going to adjust the round and this marker will move to the next area, thawing some of this stuff below the line here, or as the game goes on, freezing some of it. Uh, or most of it as the game progresses. This will go around until one of two things happens. Either you'll go through 10 rounds and all of the players will have had their chance to go all the way out to the Northwest Passage, maneuver all the way back, or all the players will actually go and remove her back to Greenland and all the players will recover to Greenland before the game ends, having reached the Northwest Passage or not. 
Either way, the game will end at the 10th round, or if everybody returns, you're going to get victory points. The end of the game points are going to be added to points you already got for finishing islands, for picking up tokens in the one, two, or three areas, for reaching the Northwest Passage or returning to Greenland, uh, and those points are going to be for having the most of the different types of tokens that I talked about earlier, and having sets of all five different tokens, which will be worth six points per set. Uh, now, if you didn't return to Greenland, you're going to lose guy or lose points for each guy that you didn't bring back. Perhaps you never picked your sled back up and you'll have to maneuver that sled back to your boat, load them back onto the boat with an action, and then take them back to Greenland in order for them all to survive. Perhaps you left a few behind. Or perhaps you never returned to Greenland, you got out to the Northwest Passage, but you were unable to make it all the way back before the game ended at the end of the 10th round. For each guy you don't bring back to Greenland, you're going to lose two points. And this also counts your ship. If you don't bring your ship back, you lose two points. And if you didn't bring your ship back, you likely didn't bring back your sled, but the sled doesn't cost you any points. Uh, so you don't want to have your guys stranded out here when the game ends, losing two points for guy. No matter what, whoever best manages to get from Greenland to the Northwest Passage or explore in between the two and return, not leaving too many of their guys behind, will score the most victory points and be the winner. And there you have it, that is Expedition Northwest Passage, uh, a game about exploring, which is not exactly uh, a fresh theme, but this one kind of takes it to a fresh area, the Northwest Passage. Uh, it, that combined with the mechanics or mechanisms of the freeze-thaw of the different terrains that you're moving through, uh, and preventing you from moving your boat if you're in a frozen area, so do you want to navigate into the non-frozen areas, or try and position yourself to use your boat more, or are you going to kind of move your guys from the boat onto the sled and take them out? When when you do so, how many are you going to leave on the boat? That has some say later uh, in how quickly you're going to be able to get back uh, and what you'll be able to do with maneuvering your boat once the boat is out of the frozen area. Uh, in the game, you're going to get points for you know finishing your islands or finishing islands, picking up those tokens, uh, and of course racing out to the Northwest Passage, uh, being the first to get there. But is it worth it to race out there, or do you want to kind of take your time, get there eventually, maybe, maybe not even get there at all, but keep your crew alive? Because if you don't bring your crew back, you will lose a lot of points. The first time I played, I brought no one back. Uh, everybody died, nobody went home. Not a good idea. It simply, it, it doesn't work. You gotta bring guys back. Um, it, it, everybody can't die. It's not good. Uh, but overall, I think it's a very interesting, simple game. Super simple game to play, uh, but terribly difficult to master, and I, I enjoy that. Uh, the mechanics are super easy to learn, but you can't really necessarily bring everybody back and you gotta figure out that balance. So, if this sounds good to you, definitely suggest checking this one out from Madagot Games, that's Expedition Northwest Passage. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Boo! <laughs>